Hello everyone. I have another share tonight. I'm just going to do a flip through. I came across this book. I was pulling out some samples that I need to bring into the store. We're uh, starting up some jelly printing classes again. And of course, March of 2020 was, um, well, we didn't actually meet that month because you know what, but um, we've been meeting, a group of us have been meeting every month and um, doing some jelly printing featuring an artist or a technique or a color or a product or whatever it was all created on the jelly plate and so this was the binder we just used the arc binding system from staples it's just very similar to the 365 uh program that michael's carried and this is just uh the covers we've we punched it and just used this so i can expand it i can take things out i love this system for that and this is a jelly print it's a print i made a copy of it so i still have the original and this was my cover I chose and the back and here so this it was just different techniques this was uh you know putting your color down letting it dry making a pattern and then putting a stencil on top that was fun and this one we just made some big tags and this was a bit of a collage and I try to let I try to tell people don't when you're jelly printing don't throw anything away actually save everything even if your prints are awful because you can use a piece of a print and it'll be wonderful and like this one here it's it's pretty I don't know what I'll do with it probably doodle on it but that's for another time and then we had uh, some more, more advanced techniques was stents, uh, stamping and uh, using the gel plate to make um, acetates stamping and, and jelly plating on acetates is a lot of fun and here this was just a strip of a paper that I had left over and this is the original in here it's very rough it's textural and just uh, stamping the face to go over top I really like that look and that's what's on the back so at that time I, if I, you're not printing on both sides of the paper then we just glued this on to some 65 or 80 pound cardstock and mounted it in there so here's another one that we did on acetate and all the all the texture you get we picked off from the plate and uh, then colored up behind it and this was just not my favorite print but it was just something that I was showing how to get three colors on there and how not to over blend them and I think that goes on there okay that focuses it and here is another one where did circles and we painted behind the circles but um, stamping on the plates you can pick it up with the acetate or vice versa here is another acetate because you're you got to put down your foot whatever you want to see in the front of course with plate that's what you put down first so this was a stamp and then multi layers of um, paint after that and this one here I like with the three skulls they turned out awesome you can see the coloring behind it doesn't look that great but um, it's effective it's very effective and then we uh, we were inspired um, by some of the, the things we did with uh, Robin McClendon and her style. And here it was just a rough print and I just made a little collage, just keeping it simple and using a nice background. And this was a portion of another, this was done at the same time. You can see the brush strokes at the same time that I did the cover page and just using stamps and making a collage before pulling the print. And uh, this was a background, a similar background that I did for a journal page. And uh, that's just very quick and easy with the, with a scraper or a catalyst tool. It's just to scrape your paint down and then pick it up and then just, again, do a little bit of collage. And then, oh, geez, I don't remember her name. I got to find her name, but she inspired us to do some collage. This is just all kinds of blues papers that have been torn into strips and then built up again into a little... And there's a sun coming out, peeking out the, the horizon, uh, just making it into a nice little scene. And this was an underworld world scene. And this one here, there's uh, we were using tea bags. There's some patterned paper in there. And we were using stamping on uh, tea bags and using that and stamping for the background. So, And I remember these little pieces. I needed something bright to go here. And I just, um, I had a print that there was, it wasn't very great, but those three little pieces were nice and you just randomly cut them into squares and it's just awesome. And then here we have a whole bunch of tags. We we're just doing tags, tags, tags. And then I just made a little flip like this. So it's, it's front and back, front and back, front and back. 
and they're just so pretty. I can't do, look at this. Look at these prints. Most of it was done with a very dirty plate. And this, I remember, it was an exercise with yellow. Yellow's not a color I use a lot of, um, but I have been. And so it's using textured, and there's some jelly, some deli paper there, some printed deli paper, and some other bits and pieces. And again, doing a collage. And there again, and these are actually circles cut out from material. It's a stripey material I had. And here is another piece of paper that we used. And I love the look of deli paper. It's semi-transparent. And you just connect everything by doing little dippy dots. And we did an image transfer. And this was, actually, this was a wrecked print because I used uh, tissue paper to pull the print, but I used dollar store tissue paper. Now I use the stuff from Party City that's got a, or a wet tissue paper that's thin, but it has, um, it takes the wet, it doesn't stick. This one stick, stuck to the plate badly, and it didn't all pull up, it's pulled up in sections. And then I pulled uh, another print, I just put the paper on top. So that created a resist, and that worked out quite well. And here's a, here's a, we just did a flip on this one. And here is a collage of a whole bunch of different bits. So we were punching circles, but then using the extra, adding numbers and letters. These are uh, sticky letters that you can get at the dollar store. They have the whole alphabet there. And that was pretty, you know, a buck 25 for a whole pack of alphabet plus. And then just uh, die cutting and using some of those papers we ordinarily would maybe think about tossing in the trash and making a collage. And then we had a black and white phase. We were doing some a monochromatic black and white, maybe with a little bit of, there's gold or copper in there, a little bit. And here's another one, just making, lining them up and just making strips out of them. Different textures, really looking at the textures for this. And this is, um, a lady, an African lady, and there's gold. I don't think you can see the shine, but there's gold in the background. And just had a pattern, and we cut up her headdress and uh, pieced it together again. And that was fun. And then, oops, see, sometimes they come out. And that's just an interesting print. We used a lot of different things. Um, more paint scrapings than using the brayer had some techniques where we just used either a credit card or a catalyst tool or a palette knife or something else to spread the paint. And so you can see this was a trying to be a deliberate print, but then this one was really gorgeous when it was pulled. And here again, you've got some prints that weren't great prints, but if you overprint on them, then it's really nice. And this one here has a lot of texture in the background and uh, the blue leaves on top, I think is really awesome. And again, multiple layers, just layering, 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 and then pulling that fabulous print. And there's another one. So that's my little book. That's my little sample techniques. And hopefully we'll be able to get back to in-person jelly printing very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.